So welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. Today um, we are starting the first of many series of the health and wellness series, paving the path to wellness here at Heart Niagara. My name is Ijama Michael, or you can call me Jay. Um, I am an exercise science for health and performance student at Niagara College Canada. And our first topic or first workshop is aging with vitality, overcoming the impacts of health, of aging on health. So basically what we will be talking about today is we know that aging happens as long as we're alive. So, um, and there are impacts that age have as we, uh, um, as we grow older on our health. So we wanna make sure that even though these processes are happening, we want to overcome those impacts to make sure that we live a, a life full of energy, a life full of vitality. So that's basically what we're gonna be talking about today. So thank you for everyone who's joining us live. We hope you enjoyed this session and we hope you would be here for subsequent ones. So let's get into it. So what are we gonna be talking about today? Um, our discussions will be around, firstly, the aging paradigm. We have heard or seen or been in conversations in rooms where aging has been spoken of, um, statements have been made. Are these statements myths? Are they facts? Do they really happen? So we're going to find that, find out if these um, statements or conversations around aging are actually facts or myths. Next, we'll move on to talking about what facts is actually influence aging. Um, how do we tweak these factors to gain positively um, out of situations? What tips do we need to um, carry out? What things do we need to do to make sure that these factors that influence aging um, bring about positive outcomes for us? And then we'll go further to talk about those things that are considered normal. So if we know what's normal with aging, then we worry less. We know exactly what to do when um, things don't go the right way. After that, we'll move on to um, speaking about or discussing about ways to promote health as we age, because everyone wants to live a healthy, long life, because disease and ill health generally is um, not what we want for ourselves or our loved ones um, as they grow older. And then finally, we will definitely be giving you tips about how you can age and still be full of energy, full of vitality. So let's get into it. Before we move further, let's talk about what wellness is. Um, a series of definitions and um, statements or exist about what wellness is. So one of them is that wellness is the act of practicing healthy habits on a daily basis to attain better physical and mental outcomes. So what this definition is saying is that it is a habit, it's constant, it's something you do on a daily basis. And what you're trying to do is to attain a goal of a better physical and mental health. Another definition um, is that wellness has been described as a, the quality or state of being in good and optimal health among individuals, groups, populations, especially as an actively sought goal. So we're going back to the fact that it is a, a goal that is trying to be, we're trying to attain. It is worthy of notes um, that optimal health in itself is not easily achieved. So it's something we have to strive for to achieve. And I'd like to say that it can be achieved if you thrive, if you strive for it and for it, and then you can thrive while on the journey to um, optimal health and wellness. 
So if you're joining us um, live, we just want to begin with this um, short activity where you can just, if you have your cell phones with you, you can just um, grab your cell phones and get a link um, this, through this QR code. It takes you to uh, uh, a link or, or a page where you answer a few questions regarding statements that are made. So we want to find out what do you think? Are these myths? Are these facts? Are these truths? Or are they false statements that have been made about aging? So if you can do that, there's just about six questions. It'll take you literally three to five minutes or less to go through them. So we can discuss further about um, what misconceptions or facts or myths there are out there about aging. So we'll just give you one to two minutes to run through that and then we'll begin. So if you did um, use the QR code, you'll see some questions on there or some statements rather on there that are um, that we're trying to figure out. Are these myths? Are these facts? Are we sure? Are we unsure? So one of them being aging automatically means declining health and disability. This is a myth. It's untrue. It's unfounded. It's it's not it's 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 not a fact. Aging does not automatically mean that your health will decline or you'll become disabled. No. The next one being um, memory loss is, is an inevitable part of aging. So not true. It's a myth. Because you age doesn't necessarily mean that you will have um, memory loss. There are a ton of examples of aged um, and older adults who have sharp brain um, functions they have you'd hear stories of of um, grandmothers and great grandmothers who will tell you every single story with perfect details of when they were much younger who would remember name who would remember names streets places dates and events so memory loss is definitely not an inevitable part of aging Next, um, one question, one statement that you might also see on there is that um, older people um, cannot learn new habits. I don't know if you've heard the statement where, um, where it said old dogs can't taught new tricks. And that's a myth. You can any day, any time um, pick up a new habit as long as you're consistent. You can thrive at anything you do, no matter what age you are, as long as you put your mind to it, because everything really starts in the mind. And finally, one, one statement that we have on there is physical inactivity and poor, and poor nutrition accelerates the gradual age-related decline in muscle mass and strength. This is absolutely true. So if we have no physical activity, poor nutrition, then it's a high road to gradual age-related decline in mass and muscle strength. We do not want that to happen to us, do we? So the reason why we're here. So let's move on. So since we've spoken mostly about myths on this slide, we'll be moving on to the next slide just to, to state some facts um, about aging. One fact about aging is that although some conditions may be more common with age, such as hearing loss, osteoporosis, it does not automatically mean poor health. As long as it's managed, as long as it's prevented, as long as you know how to, 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 um, to, to live with it, then you'll be good. Another one is that um, brain training and learning new skills can be done at any age, like I said, to keep your memory sharp. The tip is to start early to form those habits, because as soon as you form hard habits, then you'll be able to progress and do it without a lot of thought. One thing that is good to know um, is that exercising itself is key to overall health and well-being 
and it significantly slows down aging. I do not think of, I can't even imagine um, anyone who would know that exercise does do this and would not want to exercise. And I also think that a lot of people think about exercise as energy expending rather than um, energy giving. So let's move on and see. <laughs> So before we move further, just to reiterate about how exercise um, is key to overall health, and because we're health professionals, we always want to deal with facts and um, research. So there was a study that was done in 2018 um, um, from the University of Birmingham and King's College in London, and it compared 125 cyclists with a control group of people who did not exercise regularly. So the re with this study, the, re the researchers found out that the expected loss of muscle mass and strength associated with aging was not present in these cyclists. They also found out that there was no increase in body fat or high cholesterol levels or um, associated with aging, which is quite interesting because if by just exercising or by just cycling regularly, the said normal, um, the, the said normal processes that, that happen in aging didn't happen anymore, then why not exercise? So this is not me saying you should, you know, go out and grab a bike. No, research suggests that just 30 minutes of moderate exercise per day is enough to, to kickstart a whole slew of health benefits. So there's no excuse to not keep moving. So the, 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 the goal is to keep moving. So what is aging versus aging with vitality? Because either way, everyone's gonna age, we're gonna age. So we want to know what is the difference? Why should we really bother? So um, aging um, brings about physiological changes due to cellular damage. So if we are going to age and we're going to have um, um, physiological and biological decline in function, why not do it? Why not experience aging but remain strong, remain active, remain, remain full of energy regardless of the decline in biological functions? So uh, I would suggest, we would suggest, great, let's age with vitality. What do we need to do to maintain energy, to maintain vitality? And that is what we're gonna be telling you here today. So as we go about our lives, we want to, we, we want to age, I, I believe I want to age with vitality. I believe you do too. So we want to find out what are the factors that influence the aging process. Um, although there are a lot of, although a lot of the um, variations that happen um, as individual individuals age are genetic, there are many other factors that affect how we age or how we experience aging. And most of them are due to physical, social, and environmental factors. So we spoke about genetics. So with genetics, as you age, um, factors that might influence you are, are you just predisposed to um, certain conditions or do, the, does heart disease run in your family, breast cancer, uh, what so so you already know that you're aware that okay you might be predisposed to these conditions. Um, so what do you do about it? However, we have others, and these are physical activity. So so what does this mean? Are we exercising or do we have a sedentary lifestyle? Do we just not do anything? regarding moving, no exercise, physical inactivity. Do we always take the elevator, no stairs? Do we take, do we park our cars right at the doorstep of where we're going? Or do we just take walks when the sun is shining and it's a beautiful day? 
um, that would de definitely affect how you age. So the more, you, more physical activity, the better um, energy, vitality you have as you age. Then on to nutrition. What do we eat? The statement goes, which is very common, you are what you eat. And I do believe that in its entirety, we are what we eat. So if you eat healthy, if you eat fresh, if you um, eat fruits, vegetables, less processed foods, um, your body will thank you for it because you get more nutrients out of fresh foods, out of less processed foods, out of less sugars. Um, then sleep, that's a big one. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting seven to nine hours of sleep every night? Um, are you consistent with it? Then the environmental and lifestyle choices that we make. Do you smoke? Hmm. Do you drink? Do you use substances? Um, or do you use or abuse substances? Um, as as an, uh, a young adult, middle-aged adult, or even as an older adult. So these collectively would affect how well you age or how you experience aging. So let's move on to have a conversation or discussion about what things or things that are actually considered as the normal process in aging. And we're just going to be taking um, several um, biological uh, systems to kind of give a breakdown of what really happens. So let's start with the, the, um, the cardiovascular system, the heart. One thing that is normal as we age is that stiffening of the blood vessels and arteries would occur. Would occur. So if this is going to happen, just as a normal process of aging, what we do not want to do is to have social or physiological or, or, or social or physical um, things that would, would put us more at risk of stiffening and blood vessel of our blood vessels and arteries resulting in atherosclerosis. What are these um, examples of these? Smoking, alcohol consumption, stress, um, lack of sleep. So we definitely want to avoid all of those things because we know that just as a normal part of aging, stiffening of blood vessels and actually it's gonna happen, it's gonna put more work on our hearts. It's gonna, um, so we, we, we want to do things that would not let, um, would, would, would compensate for this. Moving on to bones, joints, and muscles, we always find we always um, if we think about it, we will find that um, if we have been in certain sort of spaces with older adults, one common um, complaint is bone aches, pains, um, arthritis, fracture, and this is because as we age, we lose bone density. Um, because it's weakening, weakening of the bones and um, older people are more susceptible to fracture. So um, muscles do strength, endurance, flexibility. So we want to do things that would compensate for these. Then the onto the digestive system. Structural changes in the large in intestine can result in more constipation. Contributing factors are lack of exercise. So we go back to exercise again not consuming enough fluids, we'll go back to nutrition, a low fiber diet, nutrition, certain medications, physical and, um, um, and social, um, social factors. So we want to make sure that we have, we, we create habits that compensate for these. Moving on to the bladder and urinary tract, as we grow older, our bladder weaken, our bladder muscles weaken. Um, it's more difficult to empty your bladder. You may have urinary incontinence. Our metabolism also slows um, because we don't burn as much calories as we used to. We also gain weight for the same reason. With memory and thinking skills, as we age, older adults tend to 
forget names, things, and find it difficult to multitask, which are all normal parts of the aging process. Then let's talk about skin. With age, we, um, fatty tissue be beneath the skin um, decreases. It causes the skin to thin out. The skin loses elasticity, it becomes more fragile, it becomes more fragile, it bruises easily, it becomes more dry. We have appearance of age spots, wrinkles, skin tags. So what do we do to make sure that we keep these changes um, at a bare minimum? So much so that we continue to live a healthy life. So how do we promote um, um, cardiovascular and heart health as we age? Firstly, we need to eat a healthy diet. We cannot say that enough. Choose fruits and vegetables over, over processed foods. Eat fruits and vegetables. Make them a snack. You, you, because um, I think there's a misconception, misconception where snacks have to be um, burgers or processed foods or high foods high in sugar and fat and saturated fats and salts like chips meanwhile there are many healthy food options that we could choose from and secondly healthy food is is um comes across as being boring but you can always spice it up you can jazz it up you can do anything with it Secondly, sleep. Are we getting enough sleep? It's, it's recommended that we get at least seven to nine hours of quality sleep every night. So that is one thing that we need to, to try to do to improve our heart health. We need to manage stress because stress leads to hypertension, high blood pressure. So how do we do this? We need to meditate, we need to exercise, we need to talk, um, we need to have therapy if, if that works for us. Moving on, fourth thing we need to do to, to promote our heart health is not to smoke or quit smoking if you already do. Um, don't engage in substance abuse because smoking contributes to the said stiffening and um, of, the, of the artery and blood vessels um, leading to hypertension as we grow older. And then let's not forget about physical activity. So physical activity doesn't necessarily mean that um, doesn't necessarily mean exercise. So physical activity are those activities that we do as part of our day: walking, swimming, things we enjoy, jogging, um, even moving furniture around while you have chores to do around the house. So if these are part of your daily routine, it is it is considered physical activity. So these are a few things we can do to promote our heart health. So, like I said earlier, we also um, have challenges with bones, joints, and muscle health. So how do we, what ways do we promote these? Firstly, calcium um, as a mineral is essential for healthy bone, bones, joints, and muscles. So we need to include, include calcium in our diet. It's recommended that we get at least 1,000 milligrams daily for adults. And then it increases to 1,200 milligrams for females who are 51 and males who are 71 years and years and older. So as you grow older, as there is a decline in um, bone, joints, and muscle health, then you need more calcium. Um, unfortunately, um, we certain individuals may not be able to get all of the calcium they require from their dietary intake. So it is recommended that um, we, your doctor or caregiver prescribes supplemental calcium, but it should always be done um, based on what you need or what you require. So if you're getting some from dietary, your dietary source, then you can get some from um, as the supplemental uh, mineral. Then secondly, you have to get enough vitamin D. Sources of vitamin D are the sun. Um, that's a tricky one because when a lot of people hear that vitamin, um, source of vitamin D is the sun, um, 
they do like to enjoy the sun at the beach when you take a walk. But we also have to take into consideration the harsh effects of the sun in itself. So if you want to enjoy the natural rays of the sun, one way is to, um, you can stay indoors, but when it's daytime, open up your blinds, open up your curtains, um, wear protect protective clothing if you're outside, use um, sunscreen that gives you um, a good um, block of um, UV rays. It's often recommended at least um, at the minimum between 15 to 30 uh, sunblock um, um, sunscreens. Um, dietary, dietary sources of vitamin D would also be broccoli, kale, um, tofu. So again, just like for calcium, if you're not getting enough from your diet, then you might need to supplement with fortified foods or foods fortified in vitamin D. Third, um, thirdly, physical activity in your daily routine, like I mentioned earlier, jogging, climbing. So if you have, maybe you have a meeting, you have somewhere to be and building has say staircase and you have three minutes to spare, five minutes to spare. You could take this, take the staircase. It really does a lot for you when, because it all, it all, it, it adds up. When you walk, when you climb the stairs, when you jog, it adds up to give you some, your heart um, and your bones and your joints some activity. Also, another thing we want to do is to avoid long-term use of medications that damage the bone or increase um, the risk of osteoporosis. Unfortunately, we have side effects of certain medications which could um, lead to that. One, one example of such medica medication would be um, medications that are used for um, that contain steroids. Steroids, yeah. So maybe steroids like um, that. Um, you, steroids that are used to to manage another disease condition, but like maybe dex dexamethasone. It's a side effect would be um, that it will damage your bones. So when you when you speaking to your health provider, um, obviously benefits and gains will be weighed to know which which is more beneficial and all of that. So, how do we promote our urinary tract, our urinary tract and bladder health? Nobody wants to run to the bathroom every five minutes when they're out. Uh, we might seem fine when we're 15, 20, 25, 30. And then as we age, get older, um, we, nobody wants to have urinary incontinence. So first, we have to maintain a healthy weight. Secondly, we don't have, do not smoke. Um, um, thirdly, we Tr need to try to empty our bladder, empty our bladder regularly. Sometimes, you, you, even if you do need to have a shadow, it really doesn't matter. As long as the, you up ultimately achieve what you need to do, um, you can have a shadow on days when you're home, the weekends. That might not necessarily work out for you during the week or when you have busy days. But yes, you you could shadow um, emptying your bladder. Next is to um, practice Kegel exercises where we exercise the muscles that control bladder emptying and somewhat um, uh, one of the muscles that, that controls bladder emptying. So what you do is to hold um, um, the bladder and release, um, hold the muscle and release um, whenever you can. The interesting thing about Kegel exercises is that you could do it anywhere, anytime, uh, and get the benefits of it. Another thing we need to do to promote urinary tract and bladder health is to avoid irritants such as caffeine, mm, caffeine, caffeine, <laughs> acidic foods, carbonated drinks. They irritate the bladder, so they they cause the bladder to lose its um, elasticity 
the bladder muscle solids elasticity over time. So we want to keep that within a good good um, range. We don't want to go overboard with the, the, the caffeine and the acidic foods. And then uh, do not smoke again. So one thing we would notice is there's a theme with everything. We're trying to promote health across all biological systems is that every when we work for one biological system, we're working for all of them. If you're working for good heart health, you're working for good skin because you're because it's the same recommendations, exercise, physical activity, nut good nutrition, avoid smoking. So working for one is working for all. So moving on, let's give you some tips about how we can promote digestive system health because we mentioned that um, structural changes can bring about um, constipation due to slow metabolism as we age. So one of the things we can do is to eat a healthy diet. So diets rich in um, high in fiber, such as fruits and vegetables, whole grains, um, then try to limit high fats, um, saturated fats, highly processed sugars, and drink enough water. Secondly, we have to engage in regular physical activity that can help limit constipation. One thing I've noticed, for example, even with kids who um, are mostly on their iPads or, or in front of the TV, rather than playing outside, um, they seem to, to be less constipated than kids who, who are just stuck in front of the TV. So you will find that having kids who play, who run around, um, or and all of that have faster bowel movements. So just imagine if that happens in kids and young um, children and young adults. Then think about what would happen if your biological processes or um, bi biological functions are already declining and you're not moving. And then it becomes a problem. With constipation can come come other challenges such as hemorrhoids and and it's the, it, the list is endless. So what we want to do is to make sure that we keep um, moving. Thirdly, um, do not ignore the urge to have bowel movement. Don't hold on to it just because you don't want to get up or stop what you're doing. And one thing I've found out over time and with research is when you constantly um, have these healthy habits or, or um, that help you promote your digestive health. Your body almost knows exactly when uh, when to do do what. It almost becomes like a routine. So if you eat healthy and drink a lot of water, you will find out that you probably have built up a habit or your body has picked up a habit of emptying your bowels first thing in the morning. So we also want to um, promote memory and thinking skills because aging comes with decline in memory, thinking skills, cognitive skills. So we want to make sure that we keep our brains sharp and active, exercise our brains, stimulate our minds. One thing we want to do again is to make sure we include physical activity and exercise in our routines. This will increase blood flow to our brains and help keep it healthy. Next thing we want to do again is to eat healthy. We want to avoid stimulants such as alcohol and medications that may lead to confusion and mental decline. We want to stay mentally active. We need to read books, listen to audiobooks if we can't read books physical books. We want to learn to play a new game, learning to play chess, learning to play um, scrabble words, scrambled words, keeping your brain active. In fact, learning a new skill or taking a new class, just learn something new to make sure that you're not, um, you're, you're not um, keeping your brain dormant. Um, next, we also want to 
be social, we want to have a create, and we want to maintain or create a social network. So sometimes people always um, say that they do not have any social network to join or be part of. So you can create one. That's one thing for sure. And then finally, we also do not want to smoke. Uh, if we are already smoking, we want to try to quit smoking. Now moving on to skin health. So this is one, one, one way to easily identify someone who's getting old, older or who is older or well advanced in age is skin. That's why sometimes you meet people who you ask um, their age, you ask the age of them and someone goes, oh, I'm um, a certain age. And your first um, reaction would be, oh, but you do not look your age. And that's what the skin is telling you. So one way to promote your skin health is to avoid harsh and, to um, and toxic top car products um, while you're young, while you're middle-aged. You just go gentle. Always, when you don't understand what something means as to what it contains, look it up, ask questions. Um, natural, going natural and gentle is often the best way to go. Um, secondly, don't shower with um, warm water, with hot water rather, rather use warm water. I, I for one, I do love hot, my hot water. When I think about what effects it could have on my skin years from now, then I hold up and I'm like, you know what? Let's just go with the one way. Secondly, we need to hydrate both externally and internally. So you want to have keep drinking water. You want to drink your eight to, eight to 10 glasses of water a day. One trick is to have your water where you can see it. I, I tell you, if you have your water where you can see it, you will drink your water when you need to. Because if you put it away, far away from you, where you need to get up or take a few steps or put in some chore to do, then you most likely will not get as much in as you can, you need to. One other tip is to actually rehydrate after you, you, um, you use, you, you, um, use the, you, after you, 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 um, urinate after you go to the, to the restroom because what what has just happened is that you lost fluid so what do you do it's a simple way oh i just lost all this fluid so let me rehydrate that's one way to do it then for challenges for cold days or when the weather is not hot when you're not sweating it's hard to get your fluids in i would suggest to have warm drinks um, or warm water if warm water is too boring or not good enough for you or it's just not exciting enough you can flavor it up you don't have to use anything that is not um, healthy you can flavor it up with lemon maple syrup all you need is just a little we're not making a cocktail we just want to give the water a little zing so yeah you can do that also do not smoke do not um because smoking contributes to, to skin damage, wrinkling. Um, nobody likes wrinkling. Even wrinkle um, smile lines from constantly speaking and smiling as we grow older, nobody wants that. So drinking water contributes a lot to reducing um, wrinkling by increasing skin elasticity. We also want to limit our sun, sun, um, sun exposure um, to ensure that we do not expose ourselves to the sun when it's really harsh. So if we're trying to get, for example, a vitamin D from sunshine, we want to be exposed to the sun between um, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 11 o'clock in the morning. So when it gets really hot at noon time, we do not want to expose ourselves to the harsh rays of the sun. Um, then again, one more thing, another thing that we have to do is to exercise. Exercise keeps your, keeps your skin tight, increases elasticity, um, helps get rid of toxins, so keep that in mind. If 
finally, um, we want to avoid tanning beds or using sun lamps. Uh, th those UV rays are hard. Those UV rays are harsh, uncontrolled, um, could result in skin cancers, which we are not for. So we definitely need to avoid those. Now we come back to sleep. A lot of people think that sleep is overrated. Nobody wants to miss out on things they supposedly need to do because they need to sleep. But here's the thing, a number of biological processes occur while we sleep and to attain optimum health, we need to get our hours. So if we need to get our hours, then we should. A few of the things that happen when we sleep is that we conserve energy because our metabolic rate decreases. So we're not expending as much energy. We're not putting um, our, our bodies through so much work like we normally would when we're awake and active. So that's one way to conserve energy. Secondly, we have cellular repairs going on or hormone release while we sleep. So if we, if we have hormone, hormonal imbalances, it kind of triggers a whole set, a whole range of biological um, um, misfunctions. So we want to make sure that our hormone levels are at the optimum. Um, brain function. I don't know if any one of us um, have heard the statement that as we sleep, our brain cells regenerate. So the, that's why the longer we sleep, the, the more refreshed we feel. Um, or when we wake up in the morning, if we're, for, for example, trying to figure out, um, for example, as a student, you had studied for so long and you had um, a problem to solve. You had tried for hours and you had no headway, but as soon as you woke up in the morning, it's almost like a light bulb. So it's because you have rested your brain. And what happens is that while you sleep, your brain stores new information and gets, res gets rid of toxic waste. So if that happens while you sleep, then you should sleep. Next, um, another point being um, why we should get sleep is because sleep regulates our emotion. Yeah, it helps with our well-being. And then onto a big one, weight maintenance. So we think about it, how do we sleep and how does sleep affect our weight? So while we sleep, um, the, the two hormones called um, hunger hormones are uh, um, controlled. So there's ghrelin and there's leptin. So ghrelin, um, so these hormones, ghrelin um, is that hormone that gives you the, controls the urge, the hunger urge, while leptin um, gives you that feeling of fullness. So if you're, you're when you are asleep, um, ghrelin is secreted, so we don't have that urge to eat. However, if we're awake, then there's more ghrelin being secreted. But when that's why we find that's why we find that when we are awake in the middle of the night, we tend to be hungry or want to snack on several things because these hormones are being secreted and we just eat. Also, stress hormones are um, um, are released um, when we do not get enough sleep. It's just a series of biological functions that we, we, we don't want to, um, we want everything to be um, aligned and in, in um, being secreted at the right place and time. Lastly, but not, um, lastly, but not um, extensively, um, sleeping increases our immunity by secreting cyto and by, by increasing cytokine production. Um, and producing antibodies and immune cells that helps fight diseases. So that's why your doctor will tell you, oh, you're sick. We need you to get some bed rest. We need you to sleep. So these are all reasons why you should remember that sleep in itself is not um, overrated and will help you age better. So with everything we've spoken about today, I don't want us to leave here without um, 
I don't want us to leave here without taking anything away. So if you have taken nothing else away from everything that I've said or that we've said here today, we want you to have remember these as you go. So as you get older, older things will change. Things that occupied your time um, will no longer be there. Maybe the kids have left home. You are no longer in school. You're done in school. You're retired. Um, so you have so much time on your hands and you're like life is not as fun as it used to be before um, and then you go into this spiral of thoughts that may not be exactly positive but one thing is for sure if you learn to deal with change that would ultimately or definitely come then you, you you that's a good start so you should know that okay things will change so when things change when my skin is um, has more wrinkles than i I, it used to, or when my bones feel like the, um, taking a run is going to hurt, um, I shouldn't just um, um, brood and worry about it. What should I do about it? So when we have that in mind, then we'll know that's a good place to start. Secondly, find joy and meaning through your daily activities. Like for me, there are many mundane things that make my day amazing. It can be as little as making a cup of tea a different way than I made it the previous day, I tell you. So little things, it can be getting plants and just watching them grow every day because you water them and keep them in sunlight. Just find the things that you're interested in and find joy and meaning in them. Um, it can be volunteering. It can be um, helping um, kids with homework. It could be anything, but just find meaning in your own daily activities. Stay connected to a social network. That cannot be overemphasized. Before the era of, of, um, of the social media, um, which is one way that many younger people stay connected. Um, we, we, th there are more, there are more social gather gatherings that, um, that's ex existed, you know. But nowadays, um, that's a bit less because it's just easier sometimes. Well, even if the pandemic taught us anything it was that we can we cannot um, go through life without that human inter interaction and when we get older that's one thing we need to continuously do make sure we have a, a network or support circle to keep us going as things change Moving on, move your body, move, move, move. We cannot, we, I can't say that, we cannot say that enough. You have to commit to a number of workout sessions each week. So at this point, I would like to say, I know I have mentioned a lot about physical activity. Um, so when I say physical activity, it's, I don't mean exercise. Physical activity is those things that you do within your daily activities. It's walking maybe while you walk your dog or while you while you walk to the grocery store is going up and down the stairs it's moving furniture around when you clean the house or pruning the, the um, taking out weeds in your garden or uh, taking a walk around the block just to see um, what it looks like on that day but exercise are shadow workout sessions where you have specific exercises scheduled to have done um, either on your own or with a, 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 an exercise coach. So whatever you do, at bare minimum, you have to have some physical activity. Then when we speak about exercise, you're even giving yourself and your body more room to do better and to, um, to um, increase energy and health. Um, uh, as you grow older. Um, finally, and not extensively, keep your brain sharp. Um, you have to, we have to carry out activities that prevent cognitive decline. So we can 
play word games. We can learn a new skill. We can actually learn to play a new instrument. There is no, no rule that says that because you're an older adult, you, you can't learn how to play a new um, instrument or learn a new language. It gives your brain room um, for creativity. Yeah, so from everything and all the conversations and discussions we've had today, we would notice that or would realize that it's all connected. Like I said earlier, if you're working for one biological um, function, you're working for all of them. So if we do want to aid with vitality, then uh, and want to keep our energy levels high, keep our strength, uh, our strength um, high, keep our health in check, regular exercise is definitely the way to go. Even if you have no experience with exercise, there's always somewhere to start. Um, walking outside, walking on a, a treadmill, 30 minutes, one hour a day will give you results that you could not even imagine would. And when you see results, um, it's motivation to keep going. Um, when you also feel better, it, you look better, your overall health is, it, it's just, it, it's, a gift that, it's, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Um, so yeah, so it's, we have to exercise regularly, um, for sure. Then definitely have to manage stress. So clearly, as you can see, I did not say, or we don't say avoid stress because it is something that is a constant in life and life will continue to throw curveballs at you and you continue to experience stressful, um, situations, but how do we manage stress? We want to meditate, we want to have time in nature, we want to unplug from those things that actually create stress. Um, we can we, we don't have to um, um, abandon our responsibilities just because we want to manage stress, but we can just have um, um, times, set times where we can re-energize re to refocus. So we can manage stress that we, we can do um, like I said, meditation, we can go for a sound spa, um, one which we do have at Heart Niagara, uh, and I'll be giving you details about that in a few minutes. Um, you can just speak to someone who just um, makes you feel better. Talk therapy, you know, paid or unpaid. You know, so and then sleep, like we mentioned earlier, you have to try to get seven to nine hours of sleep at least every night. One way to to avoid sleep interruptions would be to and to reduce brain stimulation just before bedtime would be to turn off your phones two hours before bedtime or before your said bedtime. Put your phones on do not disturb no TVs or screens um, at least two hours before bedtime. That would kind of, maybe you can also get into a bedtime routine or maybe having a shower if that helps, um, having a cup of tea if that doesn't have you waking up in the middle of the night to um, use the, the restroom. Just figure out what works for you and um, keep it consistent. If you go to bed at the same time every day, um, your body just develops a clock and the cells regenerate, hormones start to balance out. That's one good way to do it. Next up, we need to hydrate. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate as much as you can. You have to drink as much water as you can. There was a study that was done um, where um, um, a picture of a lady was taken before she start, started water therapy. So she had clearly wrinkles um, and all of that. She she had the recommended, the at least minimum recommendation of water um, intake every single day for the next 30 days. And when pictures were taken after 30 days, there was a clear difference um, to her appearance in terms of wrinkle and to some, to some level elasticity in her skin. Then um, we cannot overemphasize 
regular health screening. There is nothing worse than hearing those words, if only you came earlier, if you came two weeks ago, if you came five weeks ago, we could have done something for you. So when you feel that thing in your gut that says, um, something is not right. I need to go check. Go. I need to go to the doctor to have myself checked out. Do it, especially when you have access to it. Do it because, like it's always said, prevention or early um, detection is better than cure. So, have your regular sh um, um, health screening scheduled whichever works for you, every three months, depending on your circumstance, every six months, every year. Um, if you're managing a health condition, um, you would have specific times as to when you have your screenings done. That would give you um, a, a chance to be able to manage anything that comes up. Lastly, um, substance abuse is one that should be a no-no. Smoking does more harm than any good it could possibly do, if it does any. I don't think it does any good at all. So if you intend to begin to smoke socially, it, at the bare minimum, I would advise that you don't. It's not good for your health or your heart or your skin your overall well-being, um, it just puts you at risk uh, of many other um, disease conditions even as you grow older, so you don't want to do that. Um, excessive smoking and alcohol, it's pointless. In fact, one direct relationship between alcohol and your skin is dehydration. One direct relationship between alcohol and your liver is, it will, is dehydration and decrease in liver function. So we do not want to put all of that at risk. And then just considering, it's even, it even gets worse if we're doing that, not getting enough sleep, not hydrating, getting no physical activity or exercise regularly, or not managing stress. It's, it's a, it will just be a ticking time bomb. So we don't want to do that in any way. So. So here at um, Heart Niagara, we're going to give you a few recommendations um, of how to take action, at least from our end. Um, and here at Heart Niagara, we have fitness and physical activities. Um, at Hardcore, we offer yoga and high intensity resistance training. Um, the, the training program it's just for about 15 to 20 minutes, uh, up to two times per week as part of our physical activity program. And it uses um, a slow protocol where we, you, um, the exercises are controlled um, and slowed, but still achieves um, all everything that we needed to achieve at the end of the day. So when you think about exercise and you think about energy expenditure, um, for those of us who do, do not want rigorous um, exercise, um, 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 rigorous exercise sessions, this is perfect. It's perfect for any age, and we have personal trainers who would do, um, who will help you attain your optimum um, health with physical exercise here. Secondly, remember I spoke about starting something new. We're starting off new, new um, cooking classes in the new year. So it begins January 10th from 5.45 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. with Karen Stern. Um, cooking is one way to, it's an entire world where you can open, you, you, it's a world of possibilities. It's interesting. It's a way to nourish yourself. It's a way to keep your mind and self busy. So it's endless, benefits are endless. So it's a way to learn how to create create new recipes. So you can join us um, and at um, this, um, join new cooking classes. Make sure to visit our website for more information. Um, I will be 
uh, we you will have a link to the website and the subsequent slide. Then I have spoken about smoking or not smoking or quitting smoking. At Heart Niagara, we also have the Take Action, which is a Heart Niagara's comprehensive smoke cessation and health promotion program, helping individuals quit smoking. So if you have struggled with trying to quit smoking um, on your own uh, and just didn't work, we are here at Heart Niagara to help you do that um, every step of the way. Also, we have the sound spa. So the sound spa is um, a form of meditation that uses sound vibrations to relieve stress. Or could be better than that, just the way music will do that. But this is a more controlled environment, which kind of releases stress levels. Um, so you can also visit our website to which the, the, um, a link will be provided for you to do that. This chair dance. Um, also here at, at um, Heart Niagara and the stretch. So whichever works, which one, whichever one works better for you, we got you, really. Um, so that said, um, thank you for everyone who joined in. Um, um, and we have our website here. Just go on there, www.heartnarraga.com, and we have everything that you would need to attain um, your optimum health as you age. Thank you for joining us once again. Um, if you do have any questions, just drop it in the link and we'll have them answered for you. We'll also have um, this slides on our website, just in case you want to share it, watch it again, and um, get um, some more tips maybe that you missed up on, maybe you joined us late. It will all be there on our website for you. And I hope you join us for the um, health and wellness series paving the path to wellness every monday from 12 to 1 for the next couple of weeks um, next week we'll, um, we'll have claire um, um, sharing lots of good stuff with us so i hope to see every one of you there thank you once again for joining and this is me jay signing off for today um, thank you very much we'll see you next week